I thought I heard someone. Are you here to train? Care to train with me? Waving the sword around alone is boring. And I'm tired of crossing swords with worthless opponents. But you seem like a worthy adversary. I've always been interested in your technique. You learned from the former captain of the Knights of Seros, and traveled Fodlin fighting as a mercenary. Good sparring partners like you don't grow on trees. But know that I will beat you, and I will surpass your strength. Why? Hmm. I never really thought about that. I learned to thrust a sword before I learned to write my name. Of course, my upbringing wasn't unique. That's how it is for all children in my country. You're no use if you can't swing a sword, however mighty your crest may be. It was the perfect environment for me. I could live free of stodgy values and virtues. Grow strong so you may live, and live to grow stronger. That's what I was taught. Why should I? Nothing's as important as the pursuit of strength. But that's enough idle chatter. Take out your sword. My mind is emptied of all but the thrill of the challenge. Hold a moment, dog. Are you speaking to me? I don't see anyone else here, do you? You're that boar's lapdog. Do not mock his highness. <laughs> Spoken like a good pet. Why do you follow him with such devotion? Do you really think a man like that is worth it? Fargus destroyed my homeland. Burned it all to the ground. Slaughtered my people. The punishment of Dusker. My father, my mother, my siblings. All were killed. We received no aid, no respite. Fargus murdered our dignity and torched our pride. His Highness is different. He is the only one who sees my people as human. He risked his life to save mine, and it is thanks to him that I no longer wish for death. That's what we call blind obedience. Tell me, would you give your life for him? Yes. And what if he commanded you to join him in a senseless massacre? I would do it. Even a massacre of children, or the elderly, or your own comrades? Without hesitation. You have misunderstood me. I am the sword and shield of his highness. Weapons do not have a will of their own. Blind obedience. You're right, I did misunderstand. I shouldn't have called you a lapdog. You're a rabid cur. You and the Boar Prince made quite a team. Two crazed animals. I warned you not to mock His Highness. I am aware you have a history of friendship with him, but one more word. I've said my piece. Scamper back to your master. Felix, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Time for our tactics lecture. You'll be there, won't you? Those things are such a waste of time. Nonsense. You're going to be there. Must I? Why is this such a chore? You went last time. Though you did all you could to disrupt things, as I recall. Brazenly rambling on about clear-cutting a nearby forest to secure a marching route. And attacking an enemy base, stealing their horses. You were incredibly disruptive, and even rude. I was offering my honest opinion. Then, you left before we were finished. What do you suppose happened after that? I have no idea. Well, the conversation got quite lively. We all began breaking down the viability of your somewhat maniacal plan. And apparently, similar tactics have been used to turn the tides of historic battles. That may be an exaggeration. Successful armies must be able to handle unexpected situations. 
That starts with weapon mastery and creative tactics. If you didn't have so much battlefield experience, you wouldn't be capable of such unique strategies. Which is why we need people like you. People who think creatively to lead the army. Now you're just massaging my ego. When have you ever minded? We need you there. Just come on. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that was quite a sigh. What's wrong, Ingrid? Tell me, Sylvain. What am I to you? You're my friend. <laughs> One of my oldest, in fact. An old friend, is it? Then why must I clean up the casualties left behind by your... your skirt chasing? <laughs> Nobody asked you to do that. Heck, I thought you enjoyed it. Besides, you're real good at it. I'm excited to continue working with you. Do you mean to imply you have no intention of acting a bit more respectably? Please don't yell like that. Everybody's staring at us. When you were eight, you came on to my sweet, sweet granny! My granny! Come on! I was eight, and she was gor- That was a long time ago! Sylvain hit on Ingrid's grandmother? Wow. People can hear you! Please be quiet! When you were ten, we went to that harvest festival, and you started making eyes at a scarecrow! A scarecrow? Wait a second. That was just an accident. A tragic, tragic accident. When you were 15, you sought, relentlessly, might I add, to involve yourself with Lord Gwendol's daughter. Who do you suppose made peace with the Furious Lord despite having nothing to do with it? Hmm? Me. Always me, always for you. Every time. What a jerk. You know what? This conversation is over. I'm done. My point is that this has to end. Not later, but now. Fine. I promise I'll try to change. Are you happy now? You think I'd cheat? On you, baby? Never. Come on. You should know me better than that. You're the only one for me. I swear. Hey, if you don't believe me, well... Oh, I get it. If I'm not your type, do you want me to introduce you to some other guys who have crests? They're all nobles, just like me. What? That isn't why I'm... You... You're worse than I thought! I just want you to be happy. You know, get what you're after. I hate seeing a girl cry. Especially one as beautiful as you. So, you know, maybe we... <sighs> so, Professor... Do you enjoy spying on people? You look like you've got something to say, so say it. Hey, that was between me and her, not you. But you know how it is. Most relationships, they end in heartbreak. Anyway, I don't know why she's so upset about me dating other girls. She didn't care before she found out, so why does she care now? I really do hate seeing a girl cry. I swear it's the truth. My heart's in a million pieces right now. It's just the worst. Well, I figure the best way to mend a broken heart is to head out on the town. Why don't you join me? Who knows? Maybe you'll find love. I mean, I know I will. Calm down, it was only a joke. You've really got no sense of humor, you know that? Hey, Annette. Hitting the magic books again? Has anyone ever told you that you're pretty cute when you're studying? Sorry, Sylvain, but I'm trying to think right now. Could you keep quiet for a bit? How can you stay focused reading a book that thick? With such small print? Is some of that text upside down? If I use the formula in this line here, the magical energy should... No, that's not right. You're even cuter when you're working through a difficult problem. Sylvain, I'm serious. Please be quiet. Yeah, hang on. Look at the third line. You've got the formula wrong. I said the... Oh, you're right. How did you know that? Well, I mean, it's written right there. Most people wouldn't be able to grasp this formula just by glancing at it. 
Have you read this book before? Nope, this is the first time. Okay, now that I look at it... Wow, this book makes things way more complicated than they need to be. Hmm... And what's your take on this part here? It's just describing another application for the same formula. <laughs> this is pretty easy. You know, you're actually kind of amazing. I've been studying magic for a while now, but even I have trouble with this stuff. You act like all you do is mess around, but are you actually working really hard in secret? Nah, hanging out with girls is way more fun. I guess I just picked this stuff up somewhere. Life is short, Annette. If you waste it working hard, it'll be over before you know it. Get out in the world. Have some fun. <sighs> That's easy for you to say. You're strong and smart without even trying. It's not fair. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. No, I was just thinking you're pretty cute when you're sulking, you know that? <sighs> what is wrong with you? Hey, uh, I just got lucky with that stuff in the book. I'd normally never be able to outsmart you. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here and leave you to it. Got lucky, huh? I'm not so sure about that. Well, that does it. It might be tough, but I won't accept second place. Let's go, me. I can do this. I'm gonna finish this whole book before sundown. To do, hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not bothering you. Looks like you're pretty deep in thought. Does it? I just wanted to stop by and ask. It was your turn to cook last night, yeah? Uh, yes. Well, it was great. I was wondering if you could give me some tips. You know, teach me how to cook. I hear a girl loves a man who can cook. Sylvain. Yeah? You are from Fargus. You must understand how it appears for you to spend time with one from Dusker. To be near me is to invite tedious misunderstanding. Oh, please. I don't care who misunderstands what about me. I talk to who I want. Besides, I believe the Dusker people are innocent. You do? Fargus and Dusker have been friendly since... heck, forever. So why would our old friends from Dusker just up and assassinate our king. It doesn't make sense. Sure, there are probably folks from Dusker who don't like Fargus, but do I think there's enough of them to mount an attack and slaughter the king and his whole company of elite guards? It is difficult to believe, considering the discrepancy in skill and number. Right? At most, I can see a misguided group of people from Dusker conspiring with someone else who had plans to dethrone the king. Maybe they were even lured into participating and used as scapegoats. Regardless, it doesn't concern you or the rest of your people. A person can't be judged by the worst of their kind. Or where would any of us be? Besides, people like to talk about me anyway, so let them talk. Okay, you're making a weird face. What did I say? I have misjudged you. I was under the impression you only cared about women. <laughs> well, I'm glad I've cleared up that misunderstanding. But really, there's no way I'm the only person who figured all that out. There must be people who think like me in Ferdiad, including His Highness. Agreed. But whatever the truth, we are still perceived as traitorous assassins. Once a misunderstanding takes hold, it isn't easy to clear the air. Not without solid evidence of the truth. But even if we found evidence that your people are innocent, those negative sentiments wouldn't disappear overnight. The only thing that can change that is time and effort. Depressing, isn't it? Time and effort. Yes, I believe you're right. Man, that got serious. Shouldn't we lighten things up with a nice cooking lesson? Very well. Hello, Felix. I see you're here to train as well. Go away. Just looking at your face makes me want to wretch. <laughs> With that mouth of yours, you grow more like your brother every day. Shut up, and stop walking around on your hind legs. You're not fooling me. I cannot fathom why you seem to hate me so. Because I know what you really are. A beast craving blood. A beast craving blood, am I? 
I assume you're speaking of the events two years ago, last time we met outside the Academy? I am. The way you suppressed that rebellion, he was ruthless slaughter and you loved every second. I remember the way you killed your victims, how you watched them suffer. And your face, that expression, all the world's evil packed into it. That was our first battle. I remember it vividly. Oh, something wrong? Go ahead and deny it, you wild boar. I deny nothing, Felix. Well then. I suppose the Dimitri I once knew died during that slaughter in Dusker. Along with my brother. Perhaps you're right. Hmm. <laughs> Hurry up and get out of my sight. I don't make a habit of talking to beasts. I'd better avoid the training grounds. I swear His Highness never sleeps. You're out late, Sylvain. Is it safe to assume you've been wildly carousing with women? I'm afraid that behavior simply will not do. Ah, Your Highness! Hello. No, I was not wildly carousing with women. There was only the one. Let's just forget you saw me, agreed? Unfortunately, I can't do that. It's time someone talked some sense into you. And it seems the task has fallen to me. Sylvain, I'm not saying you can't enjoy yourself at night. But you must learn the art of moderation. Again and again, you end up wandering the streets until the early morning. Okay, I get it. I don't need one of your lectures. I've got them all memorized anyway. I promise I'll be better in the future. I'll stop going out at night, I'll focus more on my studies, and in return, you'll go into town with me, and we'll invite some cute girls to dinner. Shall we shake on it? The way your mind works absolutely confounds me. How did you even arrive at such a notion? You need to get out more. Naive and uptight is no way to live your life. Naive and uptight? <laughs> yes, well... Compared to you, I imagine I'm downright run-of-the-mill. I'm not so sure. Most men are experienced enough to know not to give a dagger to the girl they... Will you never let that rest? It was many years ago. Perhaps a good knock on the head will help you to finally forget about it. With your brute strength, a knock on the head could knock the life right out of me. You'd better watch that temper, your highness. So how about this? I'll try to behave, and you'll try to loosen up. If I do as you wish, will you truly promise to improve your behavior? what I just say? Of course I'll behave. A knight of Fargus never goes back on his word. What about you? I want to see you with a girl on your arm. I am a man of my word. I will attempt to do as you ask. But you had better uphold your end of the bargain as well. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I'll believe it when he introduces me to the lucky girl. Oh, Dimitri, you always take even the silliest things so very seriously. This should be fun. Ingrid, I've been doing some thinking, and it occurs to me that I owe you an apology. What? Why do you seem so serious? In a just world, you would be happily married to Glenn. He... he truly loved you, and it's clear that you care deeply for him as well. But on that awful night, he died right before my eyes. I could do nothing to prevent it. In a way, I'm responsible for you losing the joyous future that should have been yours. I know my words can change nothing, but... I'm so sorry, Ingrid. No, Your Highness. There's... there's no need to apologize. Glenn's death... it still doesn't feel real. I always looked up to Glenn. He was the very picture of a perfect knight, noble and virtuous. In the end, he laid down his life, the ultimate sacrifice. I feel proud of him in ways that words can't quantify. Proud? Truly? That's right. I feel proud that he died for those he was sworn to protect. Proud that he passed from this realm to the next as a perfect knight. Are you really trying to turn his needless death into an ideal to uphold? Ugh, you and he are so alike. Needless death? How can you say that? 
Glenn gave his life for you, for everyone, and this is how you speak of his sacrifice? You weren't there. You didn't witness his last moments. If you had, you wouldn't feel that way. I don't care to hear your interpretation of his final moments. He was and will always be an ideal knight. You would do well to rethink that ideal, my friend. Pardon me? He served in your guard. He took great pride in what he did, in protecting you. The very least you can do is not spit on his memory. If you'll excuse me. What is the matter with me? Are you injured? No. Good. I'd have cut my way through, alone, without your assistance. My apologies. Your apologies are empty. I... I spoke out of turn. I'm sorry, Dudu. His Highness has put his faith in you. You're a valuable comrade, no matter my feelings. I... The people of Dusker... Save your breath. There were countless people like you in the capital. People who spat, threw things, insults and stones alike, whenever they pleased. Their anger was natural. I do not begrudge them. I... I see. You owe me no apology, and I will keep my distance on all other occasions. But on the field of battle, allow me to aid you. If you were to fall, His Highness would grieve. I see. Then I will accept your help, on the battlefield. Understood. Today's dinner is steak and then a cake that's yummy yum. Now it's time to fill my tummy tummy tum. Oh, this mountain of sweets and treats that I long to eat. Oh, stacks of steaks and cakes and crumbs and yums. I hope I'm not interrupting. Felix, you weren't listening, were you? I heard enough to know that you're hungry. No, I mean, well, yes. At least tell me you didn't see the dance. You have nice footwork. Get something to eat. I can take over watering the plants. You're shouting. You can't just spy on people while they're singing without even saying anything! It's not right! I actually did call out that I was coming in. It's not my fault you didn't hear. Well, you need to speak louder then! Ugh, this is so embarrassing. And of course I was singing some silly food song I made up. I should have been singing about bears or swamp beasties. I didn't realize there were songs about bears and swamp beasties. That food song seemed to be close to your heart. Your stomach isn't far from your heart, after all. Oh, you are the worst! Huh. What was that about? I better water these plants. Wouldn't want them to get thirsty, or they might start singing too. Whew. That shopping trip took longer than expected, didn't it, Mercy? It truly did. You bought just about everything in the place. <laughs> You're so good at deciding the best thing to buy. I sort of wanted it all. I mean, not that I was excessive. I think you bought just about as much as I did. Oh, really? The number of bags you're carrying says otherwise. What? That's... Oh, fine. You got me. I was just having too much fun. I love shopping with you, Mercy. It was fun. It's nice going into town without having to run errands for once, isn't it? And I'm pretty confident the professor will forgive our little detour. <laughs> this actually reminds me of going to school in Ferdiad. Me too. It almost feels like that time in our lives was a story from long ago. So much has changed since then. Oh, but there's at least one thing that hasn't changed. 
Me and you, right? We're the same old friends we always were. That's just what I was about to say. I've known you so long I can always guess. Mercy, we'll stay friends like this forever, won't we? Is something wrong? You sound worried. Since our time in the capital, so much has happened. We've had to make new lives for ourselves, and we've seen at least as many hard times as good. If things keep changing like this, I wonder if we'll be able to stay the same people we are now. I wonder that too. I don't think everything in the future will be perfect, but it's us. So I'm sure we'll figure it out together, right? How did you know what I was going to say? <laughs> oh, Mercy, I can always guess what you're gonna say. Oh, it's getting late. We better hurry back before the professor gets angry. You're right. Run, Mercy! What? Wait for me, Annie. You know I'm not as fast as you. Run! <laughs> Did you want something? I see. If you have the time, then please assist me. I am to water the flowers in the greenhouse. Thank you. Only do not water the ones in that corner. They are from Dusker. They require a dry environment. The roots will rot otherwise. I know enough. I owe you a debt of gratitude. In both the extracurricular activities here at the Academy, and on the battlefield. Your presence has been instrumental in the defense of His Highness. You have my sincerest thanks. To me, it is not nothing. Was there something else you wanted? Then please, excuse me. <sighs> that's the third time this month. Well, that's that. Father never relents. Oh, Professor! Hello! Did you need something? Well, um... That is, I was just tossing out something I have no need of. It's important to keep our spaces clean after all. You'd do well to remember that too, Professor. A clean space makes for a clean mind, or some such. Getting rid of things you have no need for is the first step to managing one's belongings in an economical way. While I'd love to help, I don't want people getting the wrong idea with me being alone in your room. Despite my family's nobility, we have never been particularly wealthy. So my father raised me to be conservative with my resources, paring down when necessary. He also encouraged me to keep my living spaces immaculate, so the two go hand in hand, I suppose. Yes, he's a good person. Even when managing our territory used up most of our family's resources, he still went out of his way to ensure my comfort. Oh, uh, just a scrap of paper. It was already written on, so no good for note-taking. And obviously, I can't use it to clean my lance. So I tossed it. No need to hang on to inconsequential things, you know. Professor, did you come to check on me for any particular reason? I hope Sylvain and Felix aren't getting into trouble as they tend to do. Oh, 
Well, if there's nothing important, I'll be on my way then. I still have some cleaning to take care of, after all. Talk to you later, Professor. I'm so sorry, Professor. I somehow overslept and missed our training session. I didn't mean to cause you and the others so much trouble. Imagine if that had happened during one of our missions. It really is inexcusable. It's just, when I'm studying tactics, I lose track of time and... Oh, who am I kidding? I've always been like this. Before I came to the Officers' Academy, I was a student at the School of Sorcery in Ferdiad. Even back then I was pulling all-nighters well before the exams. And I never even noticed I was harming myself. I'm just too focused on my goal. I know I've already told you this, but I really love to learn new things. It's a passion of sorts. I first realized I had the learning bug when I was about four or five years old. My father was so happy to see me using magic. Seeing him happy made me happy too, and that made me want to work even harder. If only things could have stayed like that. When I was about 13, my father left home. He was a devout man, so I figured he'd gone to the monastery. That's why I went to the School of Sorcery, so that I could eventually get accepted at the Officer's Academy. I studied harder than ever, and sure enough, I finally earned a referral. Unfortunately, my passion for learning became more of an obsession. I got so focused, I kind of forgot how to relax. It feels like I've been running in circles ever since. That's true. Just look at today. If my hard work stops me from working hard, what good is it? Okay, it's decided. From now on, I'll try my best not to try my best. Yay! With you on my side, I'm sure I'll succeed! From now on, if you see me going overboard, just let me know. I'm a new woman after all. <laughs> 